Hello, I'm Sharon with Flat World Knowledge, and I'd like to welcome you all today to a brief podcast recording with Tom Lockus, co-author on a new textbook called College Success with Flat World Knowledge. Hi, Tom. Good morning, Sharon. How are you? I'm great, and thanks for being with us. And for all of you listeners, thanks for joining us today. Let's let's uh, jump in and ask Tom a couple questions about his new textbook that he's written with Bruce Biderwell, Linda C., and Nicholas DeCanter. So, Tom, tell us, what, um, what made you decide to kind of jump in with this team of authors and write a college success textbook? I, I wish there was a short answer to that, <laughs> uh, but it's, it's something that I think probably most people who... who uh, find the time eventually to, to commit to a textbook um, probably have been, you know, it's been gelling for years. Um, I think in, in my case, in the case of, of my co-authors, we were all very much attuned to the fact that I guess most college professors, instructors are kind of always talking about, you know, their students and how over time, it, it, it's kind of a cliche to say this, but everyone you know, it's always feeling students just aren't quite as prepared as they used to be. You know, things seem to be, um, you know, the writing isn't quite as good. They don't seem to read as closely, uh, participate in class as much, and so on. You know, it's just kind of a standard faculty conversation. And so it's a it's a conversation that you know that I had with um, you know the the three other individuals um, involved in the book from time to time, and I think we all were, you know very sensitive to students coming in, particularly you know, the, the freshman year, uh, and, and simply having difficulty. It, that's a very tough year. Um, you know, as, as you probably know, the current demographics are that about a third of incoming freshmen don't even make it to their sophomore year. And that's, you know, that, that can be viewed as a tragic situation. Uh, there's lots of cause effect, you know, causes going on, and we can't address all of them, but yeah, no, it, just, it would come up in conversation among um, the four of us in different ways. And we started realizing that even though we, we all four are from very different backgrounds, uh, university, community, technical college, high school program consultant um, who works on the preparation level, uh, different kinds of writing we've all done, different kinds of students we've had, that really there, there was a kind of a core set of issues that um, many, many students have in terms of coming into college and being able to get through that that first year, to be able to learn what it takes to learn, in a sense, on the college setting. Um, so it, it somehow, uh, I don't know, it's sort of like the stars coming together, or the planets lining up or something, you know, we it just emerged that uh, all four of us had some interest and working in that area and trying to, um, you know, improve the situation. Did not find the current books out there adequate or helpful as much as we would like them to be, um, and decided ultimately just to get together and write this book. Very good, very good. And you you made an interesting point. The author team here is is kind of has all different kinds of backgrounds, which lends such a great kind of flexibility to the textbook and, and kind of gives it a lot more um, information from different angles and whatnot that, that other instructors from at a variety of different schools can kind of take in and use with their particular students. So I think that's actually a, a nice added value of this textbook over some of the others in the market. And to that end, that actually brings us to our next question, which is what what about this book do you think kind of sets it apart from maybe some of the other textbooks on the market today? Well, it, if, if you kind of survey, you know, there are a lot of textbooks out there, and some of them have been around for, well, frankly, many decades. Uh, and there's, there's I, I don't want to go into specific names, that doesn't seem fair, but uh, some of them that have been in lots and lots of editions, uh, if, if you sort of watch how they've changed over the years, they tend to just get bigger and bigger and <laughs> more and more research and and they start becoming these kind of tomes. Um, yes. And, and one of the really interesting ironies, I think, um, involved in using some of those books is that 
you know, what, what we're really talking about with college success, mm-hmm. well, we're talking about a lot of different things, a lot of different personal skills and study skills and reading, writing skills and so on. But in many ways, uh, it's a, the problem that a lot of students have is they have not dealt with large textbooks full of research. And, and in fact, so these books that are supposed to help them do that are, in many cases, becoming those kind of books. So there's a kind of an irony that to, to uh, you know, to, to learn how to read a big book, you have to read the big book first. <laughs> and, that, and that can be problematic. Um, you know, and intimidating, right? So. And intimidating. I'll, I'll give you just one little quick example. It's one. It's something that kind of blew me away. That one of one of the topics that's always covered in a success book is uh, memory, because it's very important to to learn, in a sense, how to memorize certain kind of information. And one of the uh, little things that is covered in most uh, success texts is how to remember, for example, a person's name when you've just met them. Uh, one of these books, I think, has, uh, I'm not quite sure the exact number, but about 25 different guidelines for how to remember a person's name. And this takes pages in the book. And, and <laughs> I, I, you know, you, I mean, you just think of these poor students who are, <laughs> you know, who have to memorize 25 ways just to memorize somebody's name. You know, it, right. it, in other words, it, it's just an example of the kind of overkill, you know. The, uh, yeah, you, you have 25 that, memorization tools to, right. to memorize. Right, but you can remember <laughs> all of that. So, it's, you know, right. so, so well, you know, that, I mean, that's just kind of a small symbolic uh, example of what I call the kind of dinosaur approach of, you know, you, the, the books just get bigger and bigger and more and more research in them, which is fine, colleges you know, students should be learning that the knowledge is research-based and so on. But this is the transitional book. This is what will help them from being, you know, underprepared in some way or another uh, into understanding, um, you know, how to, how to think and act and, and write and read and everything else as a, you know, as a college student. So it seems to me that we have to be practical. We have to take a focus that, you know, trying to give them tools that will work without overkilling. Um, and we have to give them a book that, that they will actually be able to read and, well, frankly, will even buy. You know, some of these books are so expensive. I think the, the statistics are that maybe half of college students don't buy all their textbooks anymore. No, you know? I mean, so so yeah, what kind of success are you teaching if they're not even looking at the book? You know? No, that's right. And I've heard a lot of professors and, and authors talk a little bit about the flat world knowledge model in relationship to the book and say that just by breaking down the barrier of book acquisition for the student, whether it's they're reading it online for free because that's what they can afford or they prefer to have a hardbound book and they, they, they lay out the 30-some dollars for that book, which is significantly less expensive than what they're used to paying, they at least have the book and that breaks down that, that barrier. I mean, you already are ahead of the game because you're able to um, engage them and get to teach them. And like you said, in the case of college success that, that you've been a part of writing, you've got a concise, clear, up-to-date book that speaks the language of the student so that they can kind of dig in and, and learn about how to be successful in college, right? With That's a book right. that can really help them do that. So um, yeah. with that being said, Tom, that actually leads us to our last question today, which is um, I kind of talked a little bit about the flat world knowledge model there. And I'm, I'm interested in maybe what, what finally made you and, and your author team decide to, to bring your book to, to Flat World Knowledge and maybe not one of the other publishers on the market? Well, I, I, I do think the, um, the cost factor, uh, frankly, was the number one reason. You know, it wasn't the only, but the, the starting point is realizing that, you know, if, that we wanted, you know, we're, we're doing a book that is different in some ways, and we did not want it to sort of, you know, come onto the market as yet another book. You know, I mean, there's there are dozens of these Colix success books, and so many of them are very close to being, in a sense, the same book. You know, over and over. Uh, you know, we wanted to start with a, a practical, usable book that really would kind of bridge students into it, and you know, and obviously. If they're going to use the book at all, they have to have it. So cost, of course, is in headlines and every newspaper and academic journal. Uh, 
these days, and the federal government has gotten involved, and everyone else yes, is talking about do. price. So, uh-huh. you know, so that's a that's a huge appeal to actually do a book that, you know, that a student can afford to buy. They don't have to try to share, which means they're not going to read it very carefully or at the right times, or go to the library to read one copy on reserve for you know 100 students. Uh, so cost was was really big, um, and you know we think the flat world knowledge model, you know, the way you, you give those different options, read it online, you know, get, a, get an inexpensive black and white copy, whatever, uh, the different kind of options there was very nice for students. But we also think it's terrific that instructors can customize. Um, you know, we're, we're not trying to present ourselves, we the authors, as the four leading experts in this field, and this is the Bible, and you have to use it just as it is, and that's the way it is, uh, which is sort of the old-fashioned kind of publishing mode, you know, here's the book. Uh, and all the instructor can do is just assign this chapter or not assign it, you know, or add additional notes and give handouts and all those things, but the book stays there. Um, so we really like the fact that you've got that kind of open source approach that an instructor can come in uh, simply not use some chapters, but then also add new material and reorganize things to fit their own curriculum, uh, you know, their own syllabus, however they want to approach it. Um, you know, so we're sort of, yeah, frankly, we, we, we just really like that whole open source approach. I think it's, it's, uh, it seems to be working in other, dis- you know, sort of outside the academic world. It's, it's fairly new in the academic world. But it uh, it seems to hold great promise, and I would certainly hope that instructors, you know, taking a look at this book, will get excited about the fact that they can just add something here and there as they need to, or delete or revise. Right, and and, and make that more relevant, right, to their students, and again, more, I guess, a little bit more connected to their students, so that the students feel prompted to read and engage in the class. Right, because because this, this you know this kind of course is taught so differently at different different schools. Um, you know, it's, it, it's sometimes a, you know, a, a four-week preliminary course. It's sometimes a full semester-long course. Uh, people are teaching. Some people include the kind of uh, tangential topics like financial management, which is, is a huge deal for students, uh, and some simply don't have time or that's not as important to them. So I think it's, it's, uh, it's just terrific that they can, they can make this book into what they need for their course for their students. That's really what this course is about. This is for their students. Oh, you know, that's well put. Well put. Um, Well, Tom, thank you. Thank you for your time today and for all of our listeners out there. Thanks for taking the time to listen to Tom talk a little bit about his new textbook, College Success with Flat World Knowledge. We certainly hope that you will head out to www.flatworldknowledge.com and check out our catalog and the textbook itself. And, of course, um, request a desk copy so you can see it uh, and hold it in your hands as well as read it in its entirety online. So thank you all very much, and thank you again, Tom, and uh, we hope you all have a good day. Thank you, sir.